Hi there and welcome, my name is Gail Porter and you're very lucky enough to be tuned into Careers TV, your guide to the careers available in Britain's 21st century job market. Today's programme is our second on careers in science and the scientific industries. We'll be talking to companies from across the UK whose essential business relies on scientific know-how. Now we take it for granted, but we're surrounded by the applications of science and its pioneers all day, every day. For example, every time we flick a light switch to illuminate a cold winter's morning, we are paying homage to the work of Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Edison and Michael Faraday. Every time we put milk in our tea, we can thank Louis Pasteur that it doesn't contain TB. And when we rev up the car to go to work, that is the sound of Nicholas August Otto's internal combustion engine. Now, only one of those world-beating scientists that I've just mentioned was British. In fact, Faraday was from South London. But the history of scientific endeavour is littered with the names of British pioneers, from Isaac Newton to James Watt, who's Scottish, Charles Darwin to John Logie Baird, another Scottish man. Britain has always been at the forefront of scientific research and development. But over the last few decades, interest in the sciences has started to wane amongst the British youth. So with a legacy of greatness behind us and a future filled with promise but lacking in student commitment, why would you choose a career in science? If you're interested in a career in science, I would thoroughly recommend that you go for it. Um, I think that you'll find um, science is stimulating, thoroughly interesting and it's something that you can't necessarily get from other careers um, where science jobs could also be used. But in, in proper scientific research I think you'll meet new challenges every day and you'll be constantly interested by your work. I think the most important thing is start doing the science you love. You know, too many people go off and do degrees because they think it's the right thing to do. And you know, it, it shows, particularly in science, I think you've really got to have a passion for the science that you do at degree level. So I would start from that perspective, do something you enjoy. Uh, and then from there, see where it takes you. I think keep your mind really open, take every development opportunity you can and don't be frightened to, to push the boundaries because you're a scientist. You know, sometimes scientists feel they're in a little box uh, and can't break out of there, but I think you know, there the, the really aren't boundaries there if you are prepared to just step past them. Uh, and I think it does give you an opportunity to, to work right across a business. So you know, have a very open view of, of where the horizon is. If you are curious about science or technology, then there's going to be, you know, you're going to get to find out how the devices you enjoy using work. You're going to find out how the universe works in a physical level. And there's, there's a, you know, a massive amount of satisfaction from walking around and knowing a little bit about why things behave the way they do. And that development will only grow as you get older. And it's one of the, the few careers now where experience really counts. So, you know, you need to have the understanding from school, from A-levels, from a degree to get into it in the first place. But that won't stop there. The, 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 the most valuable people in my profession are the people who are just retiring because they have the biggest amount of knowledge about what, you do, what, what, what they're doing. They understand how all of the, the complexities of the accelerators I work on work, whereas I'm just beginning. So just because you specialise in one thing doesn't mean that you don't have a background knowledge to go into something different. Um, the experience and skills that you're going to gather are going to be valuable all the way along and you yourself are going to carry on becoming more valuable throughout your career. If you're excited by um technical challenges and interested in knowing how things work and finding solutions for things. If you're the kind of person who, who wants to take something apart and, and eventually, probably after a few, few goes, manages to put something back together and it works, then that's the kind of person who, who might be interested in a um, career in this industry. Um, science is, is very rewarding. We're told that to surmount the challenges that the world is facing, be it global food crises, epidemic viruses, or the increasingly popular theme of climate change, science is the answer that will cure all ills. But is that enough to sell the sciences to the youth of today? I think if you try and sell science, you really have to start from where our world is today. And if you look around the world, it's the, the, the change in technology is massive. Um, the, generation of new information is almost exponential and what that means is that scientists will be crucial to the world going forward and so I think if you can start from having 
that technical background, you have a good scientific base, you're going to be in a really good position uh, within companies to help them develop their technologies and ulti ultimately help them develop their businesses. So I think forever science will always be central to our world. I think there is a misconception probably that, that, that science is boring and, and, and based on a lot of maths and formulae and actually of course those things are important and you have got to have an, uh, you know, an ability in those areas. There's absolutely no, no getting away from the fact that uh, you have to be be good at numbers and good at and, you know, analytical work to work in science, but uh, it's so much more than that. And I think anyone looking around a big scientific facility and a research establishment and actually talking to the people and seeing the work that goes on would realise, you know, how incredibly exciting it is. Um, it's about, you know, it's about making a difference. It really is, and and being able to contribute to big projects and uh, and work that will transform the, the world as we know it. I would thoroughly recommend a job in, in scientific research um, because the challenges that you face every day are evolving, you face um, new, interesting, stimulating tasks every day. Um, I'm sure a lot of people tell you that their job is varied um, and they, they do different things every day, but the nature of scientific research is that you're genuinely coming up with um, solutions to problems that nobody's tackled before, you're doing new things that people haven't done before. And so I think that's why it's so interesting. British business is suffering from a malady that may culminate in disaster for the economy. It knows no boundaries and claims victims across the business world, irrespective of sector, age and prominence. Its symptoms are a lack of properly trained and adequately qualified staff and a limited pool of talent from which to recruit from. The disease is known as the Great British Skills Shortage and it's spreading fast. So what's the diagnosis from the science related industries? We do see some skills shortages in, in our business at the moment. Um, there's a number of reasons for that. Whilst local universities in the northeast of England at least um, are very strong in, in science and technical uh, engineering uh, subjects, uh, you do tend to find a, a brain drain from the northeast of England to typically the southeast of England. So we do see lots of graduates leaving, uh, leaving the region at, at, the end of, at the end of their courses. And that may be because there are, there are some opportunities in, in the southeast. Time will tell whether those continue to be the case. Um, it also might be because we need to do more in order to get the message over about the types of opportunities we, uh, we offer within the northeast. And, and not just in the northeast, but multinationally as well, because we, we do have other parts of our business in, in Germany, in Italy, in Holland and, and elsewhere. We see a real problem in that a number of our most able scientific and engineering graduates are being um, attracted away from scientific professions um, because of the fact that uh, the finance sector, particularly the city, can pay so much more money. They, they really can offer um, enormous incentives to people, uh, which most scientific organisations simply can't compete with. I mean, it just fundamentally is it's just not possible for us to offer the sorts of bonuses apart from anything else. We, we're not in that, in that league. So it is really very, very sad, I think, to see some of the best brains and the most able people going off into to a direction which uh, takes them away from, from, from scientific work. In terms of the, the, the skills shortage at the moment, one, one of my responsibilities is, is, is looking at recruitment for the industry. And it's, it's very apparent that, that there are um, short, there's a shortage of scientists and engineers uh, coming through the, the universities at present. Um, we, we've got a, a fairly, fairly good uh, graduate development uh, scheme and we, we personally can, can support uh, graduates when they come into the organisation. So I think that's something which helps us to attract people in. 